Hi, I'm Leah Evans. And I'm Greg Hill. Today we're at Revelstoke Mountain Resort and we're gonna go through some techniques and tips to make skinning uphill easier for you. And we were at the ultimate pro, Greg. In 2010, he did two million vertical feet. In the years training for that goal and the year accomplishing it, I learned a lot about all the different things that make it a lot easier to get up the mountains you wanna shred down. In a previous episode, our friends Mally and Drew, they took us through how to adjust your boots, your bindings, and put on your skins. And now we're gonna put all of that into action on the uphill. All right, let's go. Yeah, let's do this. The first step to making your day more efficient is your route finding and deciding where you're gonna go. I definitely wanna make it to the top, but to go straight up this slope, zigzagging my way up, is gonna be an inefficient use of energy. What I prefer to do is go flatter and mellower. It's going to be a longer track, but it's going to get me up there a lot easier. When setting your skin track in the mountains, we try to avoid overhead hazards and avalanche terrain. Right here, we're kind of cruising up this ridge in the trees and avoiding anything steep and rocky like that terrain over there. It's a very complex discussion, but in a nutshell, just keep your route as safe as possible. When you're breaking trail through deeper snow, what I like to do is instead of just like driving your ski forward, is I put it down, I pull up my other ski, I pull it back a bit, put it forward, down, back, up, forward, down. That way you're not plowing through the snow. You're using what you've already broken to make it easier. Backwards, up, forwards, down. Now that we've got the skin track in, we need to walk on the skin track. So I often see a lot of people going like this, making really big steps. But what you want to do is you want to keep your skis on the ground and you just want to glide and slide forward. To take it one step further, I like to use the rest step to climb mountains. And it's what mountaineers do on the highest mountains in the world. And what it is, is you take a step and you're using all your muscles and then you straight leg onto your skeleton so then you can rest. Next step is the same, it's muscles, skeleton. Muscles, skeleton. And you're always getting these little micro breaks that give you lots of energy for the descent. As much as we've tried to keep the skin track mellow, it's gotten a little bit steeper. This is a great place to use your risers. I'm currently on level one riser. I'm just gonna use my pole here to flip up the next riser. Super efficient. And that'll just help me keep going uphill. And when the track gets steep, what I like to do is drive my hips forward and look up. What that does is it puts your weight on your heels and it allows your skins to grip better and you won't slide out as much. So hips forward, head up, and just keep shuffling forward. When you're ski touring, you're generally on a side hill. And one way I like to keep balanced is to use my poles. I put my hand over on this handle like this and I actually slide this hand down. And you can see that keeps my shoulders nice and level. And that just helps me keep moving forward really nicely. I also, for ski touring, I like to use adjustable poles because when I'm going up, I have them about 125 because it's good, the snow is going to be deep and it's going to plunge down and you're going to need longer poles. And then when I get to the top and it's time to shred, I just go to about 117. That's my preference. But being able to adjust the lengths really helps because when you're skiing and when you're skinning, they're two different activities. You'll need different length poles. The key to pacing is just to go nice and slow. That will keep you going through the whole day. And right now I've got my shell on because it's a little bit breezy, but feel free to take your layers off. You never want to get sweaty. So, the dreaded kick turn. Probably one of the hardest moves to do, but once you practice it and perfect it, it's an essential move, because no matter what, there's gonna be times where you have to change direction in an acute way like this. What I like to do is I stomp out my platform, get all my weight on my lower ski, get my pole planted, my other pole planted. So then I've got all my weight on this leg and these poles, and I can lift up my other foot, bring it right around, bop it down, and now I'm gonna transfer all my weight from here to here. Transfer, and now I'm here. Okay, whew, I got that. The next move is a karate kick. It's like a heel kick. I go like this to bring my tip around. I'll show that again. 
you go like that. So it really brings your tip around that way. And then I'm ready to keep going. So Greg's kick turn is totally awesome. This is just a little trick of something that I like to do. I get to the same spot, I flip my foot around, and I dig my heel in. This allows me to have a really steady platform. I put my poles down, I get that kick, and you can see my upper body is face forward, I'm looking forward, and I'm over my front of my ski. I see a lot of people slide back. Having that ski in just gives me that security. And then there, I'm forward, and I'm going forward. Me and Greg are here at the top of our line, de-skinning, getting ready to ski. We hope you learn something from all the tips and tricks that we pass along. Yeah, there's a lifetime of learning. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. And make sure you subscribe to the Solomon YouTube channel. We've got lots of great stuff coming out. And we'll see you out there soon. Shred you later. Yoo!